One of the super frustrating things about teaching GCSE biology is that students really, really want to talk about ozone. They seem to have ozone and climate change mixed up in their heads and they'll write a lovely answer about climate change and then throw an ozone at the end and you're like, this has absolutely nothing to do with what you're talking about. Where did this come from? Well, this is finally it. This video, we are going to be talking about the depletion of ozone, which links through to A-level chemistry if you're doing that. But this is specifically for your AQA, A-level and environmental science. Lesson seven, ozone depletion. We are going to start by recapping what we have already learned about the ozone layer. The ozone layer is in the stratosphere, the second layer from the ground in our atmosphere, and is made of three oxygen atoms. How is the ozone formed in the atmosphere? It is formed when UV light photolyzes or splits a molecule of diatomic oxygen, O2, into two oxygen atoms. Those oxygen atoms are then able to go and bind with other O2 molecules in the atmosphere to form ozone, O3. The ozone layer protects living organisms from high concentrations of UV light by deflecting it back into the atmosphere. UV light causes mutations, cancers and cataracts in living organisms and can therefore be very dangerous. Chlorofluorocarbons Chlorofluorocarbons were first developed in the early 1900s. They are a man-made chemical that was designed for use in refrigerants, aerosol propellants and solvents. Their properties meant they were very well suited to the uses we had designed them for. For example, they could easily dissolve grease and oils without damaging electrical structures, which made them ideal for cleaning machinery. They were non-flammable and non-toxic, so lay danger to anyone who uses them and the environment. They have fairly low boiling points, so can be used in liquid form without needing high pressures to keep them there, which would require lots of energy, probably in the form of fossil fuels. When they were made, they were thought to have no flaws in terms of damage to humans, the machinery, or living organisms in the environment. This was until 50 or so years later, when two American scientists formed a hypothesis called the Roland Molina Hypothesis. They believed that CFCs could be causing ozone depletion due to the chemical properties and behaviours they had. They are very persistent. They are chemically stable to so remain in the atmosphere for a long time, meaning they can reach the stratosphere and the ozone layer with ease. They react with UV to release the chlorine radical, which is very reactive. Chlorine readily reacts with oxygen in the stratosphere. In order to prove this hypothesis, they needed to collect data before analysing it and evaluating it. They started by measuring the concentration of the ozone in the atmosphere. Ozone is measured in Dobson units, which gives the total thickness of a pure layer of ozone if it existed at sea level. For example, 10 Dobson units would equate to 0.1 millimetres thick ozone layer at sea level. Normal ozone concentrations tend to be around 300 Dobson units, and any areas where depletion is occurring can form an ozone hole. This is defined as an area with less than 220 Dobson units. The team used a range of different data collection techniques to ensure the data was detailed and representative of the global issue. Ground-based surveys were used to detect the amount of UV radiation reaching the Earth's surface. They found that areas in Antarctica were receiving lots more UVB radiation, suggesting ozone depletion there. They also used satellite surveys which could detect the amount of UV being reflected from the Earth's surface. Again, these numbers seemed to be increasing, suggesting more UV was reaching the Earth and therefore the ozone layer was depleting. These methods were unable to sample for the cause of the ozone depletion, so another technique was needed to obtain samples from the atmosphere and measure the proportion of different chemicals. These air samples were collected using helium balloons and aircrafts, and they found that the chemicals responsible were chlorine and chlorine monoxide. CFCs are split by UV to release a reactive chlorine radical. This chlorine radical binds to monatomic oxygen atoms to form a chlorine oxide in the atmosphere and prevents them from forming ozone, leading to reduced concentrations of ozone, which can lead to ozone holes. 
The researcher is also able to illustrate the fact that ozone levels varied across the globe, with the worst ozone depletion being over Antarctica, especially between the months of September and December. This is because the cold temperatures in these months create a polar vortex, which helps to form ice clouds, which act as a surface for the photolysis of CSCs to release chlorine radicals so it happens at a greater rate. Once the data had been collected and analysed to ensure significance, they then had to put forward proposals for solutions. The first came in the form of the Vienna Convention, where many countries met and agreed to protect the ozone layer, but it was not legally binding. After this came the Montreal Protocol, which set out the following laws. The manufacture and use of CFCs and other ODS are banned. The use of an alternative called hydrochlorofluorocarbons will be phased out and banned by 2030. And a fund is available to help countries to meet the expectations. The Montreal Protocol has been implemented by finding alternative processes such as pump action sprays on cleaning and cosmetic products, as well as roll on deodorant to replace aerosols. It has also implemented the use of alternative materials such as hydrochlorofluorocarbons, which are less stable than CFCs, so less likely to reach the stratosphere. They can also be replaced by hydrocarbons such as butane in aerosols, but these are highly flammable. Furthermore, any products that were created with CFCs are either recycled safely or incinerated, for example old refrigerators. It is also important that the public are educated on the damage caused by exposure to UV. The development of alternatives made the agreement more successful, as well as the fact that it was designed and implemented internationally. Despite its success, however, the ozone is still being depleted due to the persistence of some of the chemicals like CFCs. Ouch! This is why in some videos I like to explain scratches. <laughs>